be happening tomorrow, and we'll be, uh, I'll tell you more about that, could be up during the 8 o'clock hour. Again, uh, a rainy Friday morning, but uh, it did not deter our guest, uh, John Gordon, from uh, swimming to the studio this morning. John, good morning, how are you? Howdy, you got a river running down your parking lot. <laughs> it is, uh, it's nasty uh, everywhere this morning, but, uh, but you made it through, so. We well, we like that. rain, we like water. Well, that's, yeah, exactly. That uh, goes right into what you do. Of course, John, with uh, the Walls Watershed Coalition, which is active on a, in a lot of different venues, and the one uh, specifically kind of talking about this morning is uh, just kind of a, what we hope is a very nice outing uh, tomorrow morning that uh, folks who are members of Walls and non-members of Walls can take part of. Well, that's right. It's free. Anyone can come. You just show up. 10 o'clock in the morning at uh, Georgia 122. Uh, in other words, if you go to Hihara, uh, turn to the left, to the west, and just keep going till you come to the river just before the river, turn off on the dirt road there and go down, you'll see us. There you go. And uh, tell us what, what folks you do. You guys going down the river, how far will you be going? This is a pretty brief paddle. It's just down to the next road, the one that goes over to Morven, mm -hmm. and uh, it should be less than two hours. Gotcha. Uh, so this this is pretty much a beginner's paddle. Uh, there's some issue with the water level due to this rain, but so far um, it's only like ten and a quarter on the gauge, and flood stage is 18 feet, so probably not a problem from the water level. Should be in good shape there. Maybe just uh, we'll wait and see if you're going to be getting some raindrops fall on you tomorrow. But right, if it's just a drizzle, I mean, hey, we like water. If it's raining <laughs> cats and dogs. We don't like boating and, and lightning. So. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it, from everything I've seen, uh, I think there may be some rain, but I don't think it's going to be anything too nasty. So uh -huh. that's what we're hoping for tomorrow. So uh, again, the people need to register ahead of time. Just show up. Nope, just show up. Very good. So uh -huh. uh, now, nice. there is a Facebook event if you want to tell people that you're coming. Just look on walls.net, www.als.net, or look on Facebook for walls, and once again that's www.als, and you'll see the event, and you can sign up there, and then everybody will know, but you don't have to do that to come, that's just in case you want people to know. There you go, and of course, uh, walls uh, does a lot for conservation and uh, the stewardship of uh, the Wittlacoochee, the Wittlacoochee, the Lapa Little River, and the Upper Swanee River uh, throughout South Georgia and North Florida. So uh, how often do you do these, these paddles, John? I really like it that you've learned to say that in one breath. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. There's some of those long words in there, but we could have all this. So. We do the formal paddles every month. Um, we got uh, several coming up. Um, there's another one that's going to be on the uh, Wittlacoochee River, and I believe that one is uh, April which uh, is going to be going from the, uh, excuse me, March 20th. That'll be going from State Road Bridge, which is about seven miles due north of the center of Valdosta, to Langdale Park. And uh, that actually goes through the edge of Valdosta, mm -hmm. which is pretty unusual for the kind of paddles we do. Uh, most of them are where it's you know, mostly woods, forests, swamps. This has got houses, it's got a big sinkhole, it's got the Shadrick Sink, which is the one where the river leaks into the aquifer that caused Valdosta to have to sink its wells twice as deep. Mm -hmm. It's got uh, some shoals to go over, and, oh well, the water level like this, I yeah. don't think that's going to be a problem, but <laughs> you know, in March we'll see. It has several creeks running into it, a uh, busy highway bridge, and uh, ends up at uh, Lowndes County's largest park. There you go, and uh, if you want to, again, there's a Facebook uh, pages, but also the uh, website for Walls is Walls, w, again, www.als.net, correct? That's right, and while these outings are free, we do encourage you to join Walls because we do all sorts of things. We organize these paddles, we keep an eye on the Valdosta wastewater situation, and some other things we'll talk about later. So uh, membership's a good thing to have. It's uh, only uh, $25 individual, $40 family, or $15 for a student. There you go. And this is not just folks from here in Valdosta Lines County, but you have uh, folks from all over South Georgia, I guess. Right, South Georgia and North Florida. Um, what, one big event that happened this year is we took in the Upper Suwannee River watershed, and in addition to our original Withacoochee and Lapa, which of course includes the Little River. And so now our territory runs all the way over to the west half of the Okefenokee Swamp okay. and all the way down to Suwannee County in Florida and a large part of Columbia County in addition to Madison and Hamilton County. And uh, in Georgia, of course, uh, Okefenokee Creek runs all the way up to Moultrie mm -hmm. and uh, Piscola Creek is most of Brooks County. Mm -hmm. 
and going up 75, Cook County uh, and Barron County uh, and Tifton and farther up, all the way up to Turner County. Yeah. What well, uh, now? Time for the big, the big, broad, general question. Why? Why is this important? Why do people need to be a part of this, or at least, uh, if not a part of it, be aware of some of the things that you guys are doing? Well, I'll tell you one reason that caused walls to be formed is the floods of 2009. Mm, okay. Now, you know, why those floods happen, as uh, Gordon Rogers, Flint River Keeper, has often remarked, that was a 700-year flood, but it was not a 700-year rain. So why did we get a 700-year flood? Well, it has something to do with, well, all these parking lots where the water just runs off. Mm -hmm. Okay, where does it go from then? The people who built the parking lots didn't really account for that. Right. And the answer is a lot of water that would have soaked in runs off, runs into the rivers and creeks, and causes flooding. So many of the uh, cities and counties now have changed their zoning codes to be better about that, you know, retaining the uh, retention ponds and things like that. But there's a lot of stuff that was built before then. Mm -hmm. And there's still a lot of clear cutting going on without any you know, attempt to deal with where the water will go. So that's a big thing that we're paying attention to. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers has actually been called in by Valdosta. They're working up trying to find funding for a flooding study for the entire Suwannee River Basin. Mm -hmm. So we're keeping an eye on that too. And Meanwhile, as I mentioned, with, uh, we watched the Valdosta wastewater situation. They're moving right along. Uh, they're, they're well ahead of schedule. Uh, they may actually finish up with some of their major projects in the next couple of months. I hear they've been a little delayed by the rain. Yeah. But uh, they're still going to be like uh, almost a year ahead of schedule, which is great. And I just heard the other day, um, they have organized, well, we knew they'd organized this, but now they've actually done it, uh, airplane flights to do LIDAR, which is side sensing radar, to get a really good, accurate idea of the elevation of the land. So you can tell where the water will run. You can tell how many of these you know, parking lots, highways, and so forth have affected the hydrology of the situation. So that will really help in figuring out the flooding. Hmm. A lot of stuff going on. And again, <clears throat> tomorrow morning the uh, panel starts at 10, and it's a I guess about a two and a half hour, three hour? It's probably going to be about two hours. It's really okay. quite brief. Okay. It's, it's only a few miles. Um, we do brief ones, we do long ones. And you know these ones on the Little River and with Coochie River also contributing towards exploring the with the Coochie and Little River water trail that we're establishing. We have some assistance with that. The Dallas Lounge Tourism Authority already contributed $500 towards the With the Coochie Little River Water Trail, or WLWRT as we call it. Let's say that. <laughs> yeah, that's for signs and brochures. And of course, if you have an organization that would like to help fund this economic and quality of life advantage for our region, you can do so. There you go. Uh, all the information, www.als.net. Now, let's talk about some of the other things uh, that you're involved with. Of course, uh, most uh, notable, I, and I guess the highest profile of the last year, has been the Sable Trail Transmission Pipeline. Can you give us an update on uh, where that is right now, as best we know? Well, funny you should mention that. Um, also, Saturday morning, at the same time, 10 a.m., we're working on better coordination on this kind of thing. <laughs> the... Uh, Sewanee St. John's group of the Florida Sierra Club is holding an organizational meeting at Sewanee River State Park. That's uh, between Jasper and Live Oak. It's in Sewanee County. It's an organizational meeting for a number of different groups that are opposing the Sable Trail Pipeline. And at 1 p.m. they're going to go walk down to where the pipeline would cross the Suwannee River because that's one of the main things we would like to stop there and of course where it would cross the Withacoochee River right here at the Brooks Islands border. Mm -hmm. So I highly recommend anybody in North Florida or South Georgia who can, you know, if you can't come to our outing tomorrow, please go down to the Suwannee River and, uh, you know, help organize to stop this thing. Uh, to continue answering a question, as, as many people know, Walls had a legal case in Florida. Now I say had because, well, there may be some way to carry this forward, it's kind of problematic. The problem is the judge found against us, found against us on every point including standing. 
Now, we think we thoroughly proved standing. We think Florida law supports that we prove standing. But the judge saw it differently. Now, when you say standing, tell folks what, what, that's what you mean by that. Well, the uh, the American court system, like uh, you know most of the English common law, has this idea: to bring a case, you must have standing, which means you must say you are you know a an individual or an organization who, in the case of Florida law, is affected by the issue you're trying to raise. And in Florida, one of the criteria is you must have a support organization. You must have a substantial number of members substantially affected. Okay. Now, we think we do. We have uh, 40 members in Hamilton and Madison counties, Florida, and, and more in Swanee County. And of those, you know, we, we had quite a few actually testify at the three-day hearing in Jasper. However, the judge only counted the ones where the pipeline would go through their property. Gotcha. Even though he sat there and said repeatedly, fishing, swimming, diving, scuba diving, these all count, then he didn't count any of that. Hmm. So where the problem comes in is in Florida, there is a well-known precedent where an environmental organization in such a situation appealed, and the appellate judge called it a frivolous lawsuit and assigned the attorney fees of the other parties to the environmental organization. Mm. Now, Walls being a tiny little minnow amongst environmental organizations, you know, we don't have the money for that. Right, right. And it's pretty much impossible to get insurance to cover that. Right. So it, it's an issue. I mean, if somebody, you know, wants to come forward and say, you know, well, indemnify and insure you for that eventuality, I mean, sure, we'll be happy to do it. Right, right. So what, so what do you think is the next step in this process as far, you know, as for landowners who are concerned about this, for just citizens who are concerned about it, uh, does it still lie with FERC? Or are they still waiting to make a decision? Or uh, FERC has not decided. Also, in Georgia, there is still no decision on the air quality permit from Georgia EPD about the Albany compressor station. And while Georgia DNR, Department of Natural Resources Board, uh, did say that uh, Sable Trail could have easements under all our rivers, thank you DNR, that's not final. It has to be, if to be final, it would have to be approved by the uh, State Land Council, and there's three citizens on that board whom you can help lobby. Just go to walls.net. We'll, we'll stick something up there about all this. Gotcha. And uh, also it would have to be approved by the legislature, and uh, that hasn't happened and won't happen anytime soon. So the the best thing you can do right now, well, other than you know, lobbying those citizens on yeah. that council, is call your elected officials, as you know, especially in Congress, because four Georgia congressmen, starting with Sanford Bishop, who recommends uh, represents uh, Georgia District Two, including Albany, mm -hmm. have already come out saying to FERC, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. Fix your broken process or deny this permit. And in Florida, one of the purposes of all this organizing is try to get members of Congress in Florida to do the same. And also you can go to, for example, your local county commissions or city councils. Valdosta and Lowndes County both passed excellent resolutions against the pipeline. They could also ask their you know, state house and federal delegations to back them on this. So you can also talk to the Valdosta City Council or the Lyons County Commission and ask them to help stop this thing. And they're not the only boards. I know, uh, I believe uh, the Doherty County Commission, I believe, has already done that. I, has called with County, it seems like they... Uh, that's correct. Uh, Doherty County, uh, Albany City Council, uh, Colquitt County, Moultrie City Council, Brooks County, and in Florida, Hamilton County and Swanee County have all passed uh, resolutions against this pipeline. That's, they rep Amongst them, they represent the vast majority of people along the path of this pipeline down that far. And, you know, FERC ought to listen. The people don't want their land taken by eminent domain to the private property of a company from Houston, especially when, you know, I, you've probably seen all the news about the price of oil and gas is dropping through the floor, which means it's no longer practical for even producing this stuff. And meanwhile, solar power is going up like a rocket especially since Georgia passed that law in the last year, making it a lot easier to finance solar. Mm -hmm. And Florida is going to have a similar referendum on its ballot. Now, if the Sunshine State does what Georgia does, Georgia 
in 2015 became the fastest growing solar market in the country. If Florida does that and leapfrogs Georgia with Florida having twice the population, then you know why would we want? Florida's already 60% dependent on natural gas for fuel. Mm -hmm. You know that that is you know a huge problem waiting to happen, especially if you get something like what's going on in California with that. Uh, natural gas well that's been going off for four months, finally been declared a state of emergency by the city of Los Angeles and the state of California, or if you get something like Spectra Energy's pipeline that blew up under the Arkansas River, then, you know, why should we even go there? Why should we risk this? Why should local people have to give up their land for private profit for a company from Houston, Texas? Yeah. Well. And that's, uh, that's why I think this has been such uh, so much in the news over the last uh, year, year and a half, however long it's been. And uh, we'll wait and see, I guess, what develops next and from both uh, Sable, from Spectre Energy, Sable Trail, and also from uh, the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. So, And again, I'm sure you'll keep us up to date with that. And uh, you can always go to www.als.net to find out more about that and everything else going on. And uh, tomorrow morning, the ride starts at 10 a.m. Again, the, just down Highway, I'll refresh my memory, John. 122. 122, between Hayhire and Barney. That's right. And we haven't forgotten the Alapaha River, which has is rated 8-plus for its exotic scenery. Uh, we're having some long paddles. Those of you who like long paddles, we got one all day on February 20th from Georgia 135 in Atkinson County to Barron Beach in Barron County. We really mean starting at 8 a.m. We hope to finish before it's dark. <laughs> and we got one later farther down that's almost as long. Um, so um, please come on that if you like. And we're also working up putting signs on the Alapaha River Water Trail. I've been having interesting conversations with it seems like everyone in the Georgia Department of Transportation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. So we can get ready for the longer ride in February by a short ride tomorrow and that'll be a good way to get ready for that. And uh, we'll knock on wood for good weather tomorrow. Again, that starts at 10 a.m. You get all the details at walls.net. And uh, again, you don't have to be a member to uh, come on out tomorrow to enjoy that ride, but uh, you can certainly find out more about how you can become a member on the website. That's right, www.als.net, and thanks. John, good to see you this morning. Have a good weekend. All right, you too. And uh, by the way, we're going to, something else that uh, the Quarterman family is uh, involved with, uh, John's lovely wife Gretchen will be with us next week to talk about the South Georgia Growing Local Conference. That's become a, really a very popular event, which is coming up, and she'll be here next Wednesday to tell us more about that. We'll take a quick break and lots more coming up. Your community calendar coming up next from our friends at The Beanery. We'll tell you about some other things happening this weekend and next week, and that'll be right after this on News Talk 105.9. This is WVGA. Such a deal. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. Hope you have a good turnout tomorrow. Uh, yeah, me too. We, uh,